Here is a dryer that has no heat. Runs good, everything works on it, but just not producing the heat. So we're going to tear into it and replace the heating element and a couple other sensors that are inside that come in the package too. Unfortunately for me, the washer and dryer are built up on this platform to keep them up a little bit easier to use and I have this shelf that runs along the top here which will make it a little bit more challenging but we're gonna dive in and get it done Okay, that wasn't very fun, but we did manage to get it out of the space here. Now that we got it out in the open, there's two screws on the rear side that will release the top panel. Okay, top panel released, and now we have to take off the front control panel. Now to get this front control panel off, there's some tabs that lock it in place. Pull it up and out towards you, and it should pop right out. You can see it's connected by uh, some wires right here. Go ahead and pull them apart. Yeah, those wires are a little bit tight, so I pulled them apart to give me some more room here. But these ones here are kind of longer, so I can still just set that up on top of the machine for now. And now we need to take the front off. Take the door off, a few screws here. Now that we've got this front panel off, we need to get this whole front piece off with the door. And what you need to do is take these tabs, bend them down, and this piece pulls forward. There's two of them here right up on top. They pull forward, and then we need to disconnect this wiring harness. Just pull straight out, and then lift straight up from the bottom. And close the door and get it out of here. Okay, and now this is what we're after. This guy right here, the heating element is right inside. So we need to take this screw out. There was a screw right here, and then there's a screw up inside here, and that will allow it to come through because I can't get the angle I need to pull that thing through the front and I hate to take off the entire shell and go through the back because it's all one piece wrapped around the back so we'll take those out
there's not just two screws in the front here, but there's also two screws on the back. It's like a U-shaped unit that supports it. And so you really got to get that screwdriver in there. Take those two screws that are on the back of that back piece. So that's what it looks like. Got it out now and this thing is freed up. Now I made sure I took a picture of this wiring harness and the way that these clips are all attached to these different components. So when I get the replacement and stick it in, everything's lined up right. These two sensors here come with the kit that I bought and the elements inside here. We'll pull it out and see if there's a break in the wire. Alright, I got all the wire tabs off. And I think what I'll do is just leave these sensors on here until I get the new ones. And as I replace them, I'll just do one at a time. That way I don't get the wires all screwed up. And that's what it looks like. Now we'll take this apart. Four screws right across the top here. Got those four done, and there's three more on this side. They gotta come out. Okay, got all the screws off. Open it up, and I can tell right away that this element is snapped right here. So I know that's the problem. So it should be an easy fix. Now I'm going to try to kill two birds with one stone here too, as long as I have the dryer out. It's been making some noise lately. Been driving this batty. Does that when it's running. And it looks like there's just a couple wires there that are running into the side. So I got some weather stripping here. Yeah, this part here with the electronics on it, there's like three bolts up on top, nothing down below holding it, so it's just kind of it's freewheeling when the thing spins, it is able to move around. Actually found it a little hard to get that tape in there while well, this power supply stuff was still in place, so I just pulled the screws, laid some of that tape across. The metal there, a couple strips, and I'm going to put it back in place. That should take care of the noise problem, the vibration. So now I got got my area cleaned up again. I got all the lint and crud cleaned up underneath, and I'm just going to wait for my wait for my part to come. I ordered it from Amazon. It'll be here in a couple days. And we can slip the new parts in and put it all back in. Okay, I got my box today with the heating element in it from Amazon. And I'm assuming the sensors are in this box as well. It cost 26 bucks. So let's see what's inside here. sensors and the heating element. So now I can take the old one out and put the new one in its place. There's some little tabs on here too that need to get bent down so these these tabs will slide through. There's the little ears on the tabs that need to get pressed down and before we can slide these connectors out. So we'll do that first.
Okay, we got them bent up a little bit, so they shouldn't be a problem now. Now looking at the new sensors that I got compared to the old ones, it's kind of a different configuration the way that they're mounted. Especially this one, it's a lot thinner and cheaper than this one, so I'm assuming the aftermarket ones are probably not as heavy duty as the originals. So, and I know that the element was, the coil was the culprit anyway, so I'm not gonna waste my time. I wanna get this thing going again. But I have these things for backup, so in case something does happen again, I can check them down the road, but I'm just gonna skip that step for now and just put this thing back together. Okay, now that we've got the sheet metal put together, we can put the sensors back in where they were. Okay, after we have those tightened now, we can somewhat stick that back in there. Red goes on top, blue goes on the bottom. put this guy back in there again, the bracket that holds that in place. All right, so I got that bracket in place. Got to put these first the two screws in the front end now. I did get a nice cut out of the deal too. Cut my finger. Uh, that metal is sharp. And now, to me, I had to get this out because it was there's no way to turn this and get it through this opening here. So I've seen other ones where they just pull it straight through, but to me, I had to take that bracket out. So I got the element in now. Press it all the way straight back in. It is like a circle along the back wall. I'm having trouble focusing in. Once you feel it going there, then put it down on the bracket and there's a screw in the front again and then there's one, there's one up inside. Okay, so now we're gonna put the door back on the front here. Just put them in the clips at the bottom and then it just rocks back in here, lift up a little bit. When you're putting the door back onto the panel, don't forget this um, little harness here in the front that connects. Otherwise, you'll get an error that the door's not closing right.
now we can put the front panel on and this wire here's got to get reconnected so this one we never touched rest them in these bottom notches here in the front and then it just rolls back that's it and now put the top on screws in the back now we just gotta do all the hookups okay so we got it all put back together again it was not easy Both set back where they're supposed to be, everything hooked up in the back, the power's hooked up. Give it a test run. Nice and warm, so it's working. Problem solved. And hope you guys find this video useful. See ya.